بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, I hope everybody had a productive Ramadan We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our fast and our prayer and our a recitation of the Quran and our charity and to make us of the forgiven and to make us of those who are pardoned and that brings us perfectly on to today's name which I wish we had covered before Ramadan I, I you know I don't even look the name that I prepare for the for the lesson I never look at the name after and so before Ramadan we did Al Muntaqim the Avenger uh, and today and a name that was perhaps more uh, appropriate to the spirit of Ramadan would have been today's name but it's appropriate all the time and it's Al Afu. Al Afu is different to Al Tawab and that's what we want to uh, draw a distinction between. Often Al Afu is uh, translated in the Quran or in a hadith as the pardoning or the oft pardoning uh, but there's a difference between Tawbah and Af uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that we would err we would obey and we would disobey we do good deeds and we would do bad deeds inevitably because Allah instilled within us desires and those desires uh, drive us like an engine to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but like any engine if it is not uh, if it's not um, if it's not guided properly if it is not controlled then it causes its own destruction it causes its own destruction and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instilled within us desires as motivators for us to uh, for us to uh, literally move in this life Allah said قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ uh, and say, say O oh Muhammad, siru fil ard, move in the land. Yes, we have to seek our provision and we need to reproduce and we wouldn't be able to do any of that if we didn't have desires uh, instilled within us. But those desires have to be channeled, and have to be governed, and have to be controlled. And when they're not, we sin. But Allah, from His hikmah and from His rahmah, His mercy, is that He prescribed tawbah. He prescribed Tawbah in order for him to forgive us, which is his Ghufran. So he's a Tawab, he is the acceptor of repentance, and he is Al Ghafur and Al Ghaffar, the, the forgiving and the, uh, and the perpetually forgiving. Uh, because Ghaffar is a more emphatic uh, form than uh, Ghafur is. Uh, and if we didn't have Tawbah, we would despair. We'd despair and we'd lose hope and we would fall deeper into disobedience. So tawbah, repentance, is a way out for us. It's a way out, a way to atone, a way to make amends. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O Muhammad, uh, O my slaves who have gone who have transgressed against themselves with sins, that is, don't despair from Allah's mercy. Indeed, Allah forgives all the sins. Indeed, He is the most forgiving, the most merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah forgives, uh, forgives our sins, no matter how many sins we've committed and no matter how grave the sin is. The door is always open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The door of tawbah is never shut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the tawbah of the slave مَا لَمْ يُغَرْغِرْ So long as he does, so long as he does not uh, gargle uh, where here it means that the soul doesn't leave their, their throat So so long as the soul, we have life within our bodies, our souls within our bodies, we can repent The only thing we can't repent for is shirk as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Or the only sin Allah doesn't forgive in the akhirah is shirk and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha He said indeed Allah does not forgive associating any partners with him yet he forgives anything less than that for whomever 
he wills. And that's also on the Day of Judgment, by the way. But a person should not, uh, should not, uh, um, should not place all their hopes in, on the Day of Judgment that their sins will be forgiven for and, and not intend at all to repent in this life. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And repent, uh, and repent to Allah, meaning to return to Allah with repentance. Jami'an, all of you entirely, O believers, in order for you to attain success. And that success is not restricted to the akhirah, that ex success extends to this life as well. And so that's why we are invi invited to tawbah. And Allah Ta'ala, He tells us that it's better for us to hasten to tawbah immediately or soon after the sin. The sooner we repent after the sin, the easier the repentance is. The less we, or, or, or the more ignorant we are of the sin, then also the easier the repentance is. But the longer we leave repentance, the more difficult it becomes. And the more we know that this is a sin and we know the seriousness of the sin uh, and its ramifications, uh, the greater the defiance and the greater the rebellion. And that's why the more difficult it is to uh, to repent. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Indeed, the granting of repentance is incumbent upon Allah for those who do evil out of ignorance. Huh? So not people who are, uh, uh, not, not people who, who deliberately intend to disobey Allah, a lapse in, in judgment and, you know, or they, 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 they thought that, they thought that it would be a small, you know, a, a small, a small sin, it turns out to be a big, a, a bigger sin, yes. Uh, for those who do evil out of ignorance, then repent soon after it. For those, Allah accepts their repentance and Allah uh, has always been all-knowing, all-wise. So we have no excuse to repent. And what completes tawbah and maghfirah. Maghfirah, forgiveness. If anybody, we have three people from the, from the, first, from the old classes, yes, where, we, where they weren't recorded, unfortunately, but qadr Allah ma sha fa'an. We spoke about Allah al-ghaffar, al-ghafur and al-ghaffar. And we spoke about what maghfirah means. And maghfirah, uh, and maghfirah linguistically, uh, linguistically denotes, or the, the original uh, usage of the words, which is, uh, uh, which is um, I'm trying to remember, ghafara. Ghafara, the, the verb, means to cover and to conceal and to protect. And that's why the mighfar, which is the, the helmet that a man wears, uh, to war is called a mighfar because it covers, it conceals and it protects. And maghfirah is the, is the concealment of the sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conceals the sin. Meaning it, is, it, it no longer has an impact. It no longer has an impact. So forgiveness of the sin is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cancels the effect of the sin. Allah cancels the effect of the sin. Taban, when we say cancels the effect of the sin, we're only saying that as an approximation. The reality of what maghfirah is, we can't, we can't, uh, is, beyond our, is beyond our scope and beyond our understanding, but we can conceptualize uh, it by understanding that there is a form of concealment and a form of protection for the servant from the effect of the sin. So the effect of the sin is removed. But what is af? We're talking about al-afu today. Afu has a number of meanings. So I want you to remember what maghfirah means, what ghafara or maghfirah means, forgiveness, yes? And then, uh, and then add to it the meaning of al-afu. Al-afu has five meanings, or afu, which is its masdar, its root, has five meanings. The first meaning is to intend someone or something. So uh, al-afun, are those who seek and look and intend, for, intend to find someone or something. So the afun are those who seek Allah's door of forgiveness. 
and they seek his grace and his bounty. Afu, afu of the money is the halal of the money. Is hal- the halal part of the money is afu al-mal. Afu of the money is its halal portion uh, and what is pleasant of it. And afu also means giving without a request, without there being a request. Yes, I want you to build an idea in your head. Yes, put the pieces together as to what afu means and, and its effect on the believer who repents. Afu means erasure. Erasure, deletion or wiping out. Yes, to erase. And afu also means growth. Afat al-mal means namat wa rabat. The wealth underwent afu means it grew. It grew and it flourished. And this is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يسألونك, عن الع- uh, يسألونك ماذا ينفقون قل العفو. They ask you, O oh Muhammad, what should they give in charity? قل العفو. Say to them العفو. Afu is the surplus. Before zakah was prescribed and legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believers were commanded to give what surplus they had above their needs. And then that was abrogated and zakah was legislated. So afu means surplus, surplus in everything, but also surplus in wealth. And afu is deletion and erasure and wiping away. Afu, brothers and sisters, afu is the, uh, the erasure and the deletion of sins. A meaning which we'll explore <coughs> uh, 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 throughout uh, our session today. The scholar said that, uh, that al-afu, afu is more emphatic and more effective than uh, than uh, maghfira, than forgiveness. Forgiveness is to conceal the the sin. The sin, the the servant is forgiven for having committing uh, having committed that sin, but it remains on record. It remains on record as a sin. Afu is to erase the sin from the record. So can you imagine you have, you have, uh, you have a record and it's uh, stated within it that you, that you um, committed a certain offence and then underneath it said this person has now been forgiven for that offence. But imagine that page is removed from your record as though it wasn't, as though it never was deleted, wiped away, removed completely, as though it never was. It's a restoration. It's a restoration. It's a, but it is more than just restoration, because with forgiveness there is restoration. But with afu, with afu, there is an added, an added charity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we said. There is a surplus, as we'll mention. Afu is, uh, afu is more emphatic than maghfira, but it is less than safh. Safh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his messenger, fa'fu anhum, uh, fa'fu anhum wasfah, inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah said, so pardon them, pardon them, fa'fu anhum, pardon them, wasfah, overlook. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen, indeed Allah loves uh, those who excel in doing good. Safh is to, uh, is to, Overlook the mistake that you have forgiven before forgiving it and after forgiving it Forgiving the person for the sin or for the mistake or for the offense that you overlook it You don't mention it. You don't bring it up. You don't chastise them at all Yes Uh, And so you can forgive somebody But before forgiving them you don't overlook the sin you you reprimand them for it and then you say I've forgiven you and then on top of that, afu pardon. Consider, consider the matter closed and, it never, and, and as though it never was. But safh is that you don't mention it to start with. Safh is to not mention it to start. And that's why the Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his messenger, Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. Indeed, Allah loves al muhsineen, those who uh, excel in doing good. Because ihsan, ihsan is giving more than what is due. Ihsan is giving more than what is owed. That's what ihsan is. And so, if I owe you money, 
and I pay you what I uh, uh, and I pay you what I owed. That's wafa. Yes, uh, that's wafa. I fulfilled my. Uh, I fulfilled our 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 agreement. Ihsan is that I give you more. It's not riba if I, if we haven't agreed on that beforehand and you didn't make it a condition to lend me the money. I did it of my own accord. Yes, that's ihsan. A husnul qada. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he borrowed money, he would always give more. But it was never agreed on beforehand. That would be riba. That would be interest. Usury. But husnul qada, qada is, to pay, is the repayment. He would do the best of repayment. Paying with, with more. So we said, naam. Al-afu is the one who erases the sin. As though it never was. Al-afu erases the sin from uh, Naam, erases the sin as though it never was because if he reminds you of it, if he reminds you of it, it will cause you what? Shame. It will cause you shame. And shame is healthy within limits. We all have to have a level of shame because it's a deterrent from ever committing the offence or the mistake again. Yes, but excessive sin, sorry, sorry, excessive shame is a deterrent, uh, is a deterrent uh, to, uh, a deterrent from Allah. It acts as an obstacle between us and Allah, as we'll see. Yusuf alayhi salam, we know the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi uh, salam. His brothers f were jealous of him and, and felt that their father loved him more than he loved them and favoured him uh, over them and so they conspired to kill him and so the eldest of the brothers said no leave him in a well maybe a, a caravan passing by a convoy passing by will find him and take him okay and so the years pass and Yusuf after being sold into slavery after being accused uh, uh, falsely uh, of uh, basically uh, attempting to rape the the wife of the of the prime minister at the time uh, and then he is exonerated. He's not just given a pardon. He's not given a pardon. He's exonerated. He didn't leave prison until he's proven, till he's vindicated and proven innocent. And the wife of the Aziz who made the accusation against him retracted her accusation and declared his honesty and that she had lied. And then he's appointed over the treasury and he overlooks the economy in Egypt. And then his brothers come it said 40 years later. And then, you know, the, uh, uh, as a ploy to, to bring the entire family, he, he, uh, he, uh, he put something in his younger brother, um, Benjamin, Benjamin's uh, possessions uh, in, his, in his bag and claims that he stole. And then he kept him there and he said, uh, bring me your entire family or else I'm never going to release him. I'm not going to release him. So the entire family comes. Tayyib. His family come and his father, Yaqub, is raised to the throne with Yusuf and they all bow to him uh, in, uh, to honor him. And then he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before that, before that, when he, when he told his brothers, uh, you know, uh, do you know what you did to Yusuf before when you were wrongdoers? They said, are you Yusuf? قالوا, Yusuf? Are you Yusuf? He said, Yusuf I'm Yusuf and this is my brother, Benjamin. Allah has conferred favor on us. They asked him for forgiveness. He said, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم. There's no blame on you today. يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين. May Allah forgive you for he is the most merciful of the merciful. There, that's forgiveness. He forgave them. Tayyib. What about when his fa when the entire family come and then he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the presence of his father, who is a prophet, Yaqub, and in the presence of his brothers. He said, And he, Allah, was certainly charitable with me or was certainly charitable to me when he brought me out of prison and brought you from the nomadic life after Satan had sown discord between me and my brothers. There, 
he didn't remind them of their sin. Because he could have said, وَقَدَ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ الْجُبْ And he was certainly, and Allah was certainly charitable to me when he brought me out and saved me from the well. And it would remind his brothers of their crime. He didn't even remind them of their crime. That's Af. And then he, uh, uh, and then he attributed, he attributed their offense and their crime to shaitan. After Satan had sowed discord between Baini wa bayna ikhwati, he started with himself. He sowed discord between me and my brothers. He was a child. There was no discord between him and his brothers. His brothers were jealous. It was, of course, it's the shaitan who, in, who, who, who whispered to them to commit that crime. But he attributed the crime to the shaitan and he involved himself as though there was a mutual disagreement between them. But, but there wasn't a, a, a mutual disagreement. He was taken as a victim. He didn't know, he, he didn't know that this was going to happen to him. He didn't know his brothers were jealous of him. He was an innocent child. That's awful. Subhanallah. He didn't even remind them of their sin. That's awful. So Imam al-Razi, he said, Af is erasure and deletion and removal of all traces. The trace of the sin includes, includes our memory of it. And we said that when you remember something, you know, if you, if you, a person who is, a person who is morally sound will feel shame if they commit a, mess, if they commit a sin, if they commit an offence. The people who are shameless are morally bankrupt. That's the reality. And, they, and they'll tell you, don't shame me over this. I'm not shaming you. You should feel ashamed anyway. But there is, and, and that, uh, uh, th that's, that's one extreme, having no shame. Having no shame and, and brazenly and audaciously doing whatever you please because you have you have abandoned all morals and all standards of decency. Those people are less than animals because the animal has a level of shyness which Allah created within it and it maintains. We have shyness as well that we're created with. It's innate to our nature. And then those who rebel against their own nature, they're worse than animals because even animals don't rebel against their own nature. And then there is the extreme. We mentioned that there is an extreme of shame and that acts as an obstacle between us and Allah because excessive shame, extreme shame, causes people to commit suicide. Yes, scandal, a celebrity will be exposed and their shame will drive them to suicide. It happens, doesn't it? And so Allah doesn't want for us excessive shame. Allah wants for us to have, we should have, a moderate level of shame that humbles us, that breaks our, breaks our pride, not spirit. Allah doesn't want to break our spirit, but our pride must be broken. We must acknowledge that we're weak. We must acknowledge that we're in need of Allah. And we ask him, and when we ask him, we don't ask him like somebody who has a full stomach, asks for food, not bothered. No, someone who's hungry and in need of food. See how they ask. And we're in need of his, um, his, his rahmah, his mercy, and his forgiveness, and his af. And so that's what the shame should drive you to. But if it exceeds the, if it, if it becomes, if it exceeds the moderate level, Allah, we said from the traces of the sin is memory of that sin. And that memory, if it, if it lasts, if it persists, it can, it can cause a crippling sense of shame, which is an obstacle to Allah. Allah erases even the memory of the sin. Allah erases the memory of the sin. And this is a bit difficult for some people to, to, to grasp. H how can we forget the sin? We, yet, you know, we, we, don't, we, don't, um, we don't experience memory loss after Tawbah, but you're not thinking about it and you don't dwell, dwell about the sin dwell over that sin and your time in or, or your time in the in your in your life of ignorance all the time do you allah makes you forget it meaning it doesn't occupy your thinking all the time imagine you go to uh, imagine you committed an offense against somebody and you ask for forgiveness you ask them to uh, accept your apology and to forgive you and that person says to you 
forget about it. Just, for, uh, just uh, consider that it never happened. I've forgiven you and consider that it's never happened. We do that. Allah's n we are not more generous than Allah. We are not more forgiven than Allah. We're not more pardoning than Allah. Yes? And, we, uh, and we're definitely not more, we definitely aren't more gracious than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just as we, not just, but similarly, just as we say, forget about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't say forget about it, He makes you forget it. And nisyan, forgetfulness, is mercy from Allah. Is mercy from Allah because you could, you could remember that sin, it keeps you up all night, and it will lead you to despair from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And Allah doesn't want that from, from us. Uh, forgetfulness, nisyan, is really a mercy. Because if a woman who had a baby remembered the pain that she experienced in labor all the time, she'd never have another child. I remember my sheikh told me this years ago. He said, mercy, uh, forgetfulness is a mercy from Allah. It's mercy from Allah. If you remembered how full you were when you ate, you'd never want to eat again. So you forget, you forget that feeling. And you're made to forget pain as well, subhanAllah, as, a mercy, as mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib. Now the other meaning, or the additional meaning, I don't want to say another meaning because they're all, they're not mutually exclusive, they are all complementary. The additional meaning to al-af, we said is surplus. Allah said, يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ قُلِ الْعَفْ They ask you, Muhammad, what they should spend, say, the surplus, al-af. Af is surplus. Allah erases and increases. Allah purifies and beautifies. Allah forgives and gives. Imagine the cup is clean, uh, the, cup, the cup, sorry, is, is dirty. And, those, and the dirt in the cup represents the sins. And you wash the cup and it's sparkling clean. You've erased the sins, yes? You've erased them. There's, there's no trace anymore. That's af. But af is more than just that as well. Because af is a ziyada. Yes? Af is a ziyada. It's al fadl. You know, we say fadl. Fadl meaning bounty and like a favor as well. Because it's surplus. It's more than your owed. You're, it's more than your owed. So Allah, from al-af, you then fill it up with, uh, with an expensive, tasty drink. So af is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases the sin and then, he, and then he showers you with his mercy and showers you with his grace. And from a, from a feeling of shame and even despair to feeling that you're the... To feeling like nobody, a feeling where you assume that nobody can feel this close to Allah as I am right now. That is from Allah's, from Allah's af, that he makes you, subhanAllah, at times there's tajalli, yani, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, uncovers to you some of his attributes and, and, and they manifest in you, in your life and, 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 uh, and in you uh, with such clarity that you feel like you're the most connected person to Allah. Not out of pride or anything, you just feel you, you, you are experiencing spiritual elevation that you never have before. That's af from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives you more. You couldn't have, you don't earn that. <laughs> you don't earn that. That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter how long you stand in Qiyamah, how many days you fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if Allah doesn't want to give you that, He won't give you that. That's afu from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it the, it's the tahliya after the tahliya. The beautification after the purification. Now, now al-afu appeared in the Qur'an, uh, al-afu appeared in the, uh, or al-afu, sorry, appeared in the Qur'an after, uh, over 30 times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأُولَٰئِكَ عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَعْفُوَ عَنْهُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَفُوًا غَفُورًا uh, For those, it is expected that Allah will pardon them and Allah is ever pardoning and forgiving. So we, we see the relationship with Allah's name Al-Afu and Al-Ghafoor. Afu and Ghafoora. Wakan Allahu Afu and Ghafoora. And Allah was ever pardoning and forgiving. We know the connection between the two. 
طيب الله سبحانه وتعالى says إن تبدو خيرا أو تخفوه أو تعفو عن سوء فإن الله كان عفوا قديرا whether you disclose something good or hide it or pardon something bad Allah has always been pardoning all able قديرا fully capable omnipotent جل جلاله why why is why is Allah's name al عفو uh, mentioned uh, with Al Qadir because you might have the power to forgive someone, you might have the power to forgive somebody, but you don't have the authority to pardon them, do you? Allah Ta'ala, He is the supreme authority, and so He forgives and He and He forgives and He pardons. يغفر ويعفو لمن يشاء for whoever He wills, whoever He wants, and nobody can question Him. It's not for us to question him. He's the supreme authority. So that's why Allah, Allah is عفوًا قديرًا. He's pardoning and he is all able. And that's why uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, told us, uh, mentions to us what Isa said to him, إِن تُعَذِّبُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكُ If you punish them, they are, they are your slaves. They're your servants. You, they, you own them, Allah. وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ But if you forgive them, فَإِنَّكَ For you are People would assume, if they don't know the verse, that it would be concluded with فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ You're forgiving or merciful. But it finishes وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ But if you forgive them, you are the Almighty, the All-Wise. Why is it concluded with you are the Almighty and you are the All-Wise? You're the Almighty, you're able to punish them if you want to. And no one can stop that. And the all wise, and the almighty as well. The almighty because we may forgive somebody, we may forgive somebody because we don't have the power to exact vengeance. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he can exact vengeance and he can punish whoever he wills and he can forgive whoever he wills and he can forgive because he's, he's mighty, because he's almighty. And sometimes we forgive uh, uh, we forgive, so we said forgive out of weakness, you're compelled to forgive, or you forgive because you, you, you don't know what the right course of action is. This person is supposed to be punished. And then you forgive them, you cause a, a, a harm to the public, to the greater good. Yes? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise. He didn't forgive, he didn't forgive them because he doesn't know what their sins were. He knows what their sins are, and he knows what is best for them. Jalla Jalalu. Okay. Sometimes a person will sin and repent, then repeat the sin and then repent, and then repeat that sin and then repent. And uh, the shaitan will come and tell them, you're stuck in a vicious cycle and uh, there's no hope for you. And that will really knock their confidence and create a distance between them and Allah. Because the shaitan wants us to despair. Now, if you wrong somebody and then you apologize, they'll forgive you. Then you commit the offense again, apologize, they may forgive you. You commit the offense again and apologize, they may never forgive you. But what if when you apologized, you offered a meaningful and sincere gift? with your apology. Something that demonstrated your remorse and also demonstrated your affection for them. That person is more likely to forgive you time and again. It doesn't mean that you offending them is right. Of course it doesn't. But it will let the, it will give them it will it will give them a hope that you will continue to improve. And that you don't commit these mistakes and these offenses maliciously. You do them, uh, you do them uh, out of forgetfulness, for example. But you offer something. طيب, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need a gift from us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive no matter how, how, uh, 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 how many times we continue going around that cycle of sinning and, and repentance, sin and, and sinning and whenever there is repentance and istighfar, there is forgiveness and acceptance. 
because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, uh, my slave uh, knows that he has a Lord who uh, punishes the sin and forgives the sin. So, so long as you know that, Allah forgives you. You know that and you act upon it. Yes, you follow up with action, which is repentance, then Allah forgives you. But what is better than that? What's better than that is that you follow the sin, not just with istighfar and with tawbah, you follow it with a good deed. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Indeed, good deeds, the hasanat, the merits that we are credited, يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Get rid of, do away with the sins. They do away with them. So when they do away with them, they get rid of them. يُذْهِبْنَ Yes? يُذْهِبْنَ The herb, by the way, you can, uh, 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 the herb, which means to, uh, to go or to travel, will leave traces. So I can go from point A to point B. I've left point A, I'm no longer there, but there are traces of my presence. Afu, Afu is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes even those traces. So the, the sin, if it goes, it goes away because of the hasan. Hasana comes and the hasanat come and push away the sins. Get, remove them from the, from the book of deeds. But there may be traces. Al Afu comes and he wipes away. Because uh, we said that it's deletion and wiping away of traces. The, the Arabs would say, Afat al Diyaru idha muhiyat atharuha. Afat al Diyaru, Afat, the houses have undergone Afu, yes? And they would say that when there are no longer any traces for those houses for those homes, nothing. When you go and you see relics or whatever, no, 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 there are traces. But when there's nothing, it's as though there was nobody here. And that's what Afu is, the, 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 the removal. And of course, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uh, commanded us uh, when he, uh, naam, when he told Mu'adh ibn Jabir radiallahu an, ittaqi Allaha haythu ma kunt, wa atbi'i sayyi'ata, wa atbi'i sayyi'ata al-hasana tamhuha, wa khaliqi al-nas bi khuluqin hasan. Uh, he said, fear Allah wherever you are, do good deeds after doing bad ones. The former will wipe out the latter. Tamhuha. And behave decently towards people. طيب, what is our share of Al-Afu? We always say that we have a share of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. Uh, whoever wants to receive a glimpse of the light of this attribute has to First, forgive those who have wronged them, who have committed wrong against them, or dealt with them unjustly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his messenger. He said, خُذِ الْعَفْوَةِ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ خُذِ الْعَفْوَ Take Afu. Now the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself asked Jibreel, O oh, Jibreel, what does that mean? Uh, and so he, uh, and so the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Ma hada ya Jibril? What is this, O oh Jibril?" And so Jibril said, uh, "لا أدري. I don't know. حتى أسأل العالم. I don't know until I ask العالم, the All-Knowing, Allah subhanahu wa taala." So Jibril went and returned, and he said, "Ya Muhammad, إن الله يأمرك أن تصفح عمن ظلمك." O oh Muhammad. Allah commands you to overlook, overlook the wrongs of those who wronged you. وَتُعْطِي مَنْ حَرَمَكْ And to give those who deprive you. وَتَصِلَ مَنْ قَطَعَكْ And to give and to con and to connect and maintain the connection with those who sever it. And so the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to the companions, أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ أَشْرَفِ أَخْلَاقِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Shall I not guide you to the most noble and honorable of the manners in this life and the next. And they said, وَمَذَكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And what are they, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, تَعْفُوا عَمَّنْ ظَلَمَكْ تَعْفُوا Pardon those who have. Pardon those who have wronged you. Give those who have deprived you. And connect with those who have disconnected from you. And so that is our share of Al-Afu. 
Aisha radiallahu anha went with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on one of the military expeditions and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was the only person who would take one of his wives when he went on a military expedition. Of course the women are not obligated to fight, they remain in their homes. But so nobody says he's, uh, uh, so nobody says he's, uh, he's left his, uh, he's left his women and he's, uh, and um, because he's, he's afraid, he's worried for them. When he, bring, when he would take them out, it, w it is the ultimate show of confidence <laughs> and, and, uh, and power. In, and, and when there is war, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to play mind games against your enemy. And so you come out with your wife, that means you're very confident. Because you're saying, I'm so confident you're not going to defeat us and then take her into slavery. Because of course they would enslave people. They would enslave anyone who they uh, uh, defeated in battle if they wanted to. And that was international law. International law, okay? Before somebody says, why does Islam enslave people? Ever? Islam doesn't enslave people. There's no, such, uh, there's no such chapter in any book of fiqh called al-istirqaq. Istirqaq which is uh, enslaving. Rather, in every book of fiqh, there is Babul Itq, Wal Mukataba, the book of uh, emancipation and Mukataba. Mukataba is where, where a slave buys their freedom. There is no verse in the Quran commanding enslavement, but there are verses in the Quran com commanding, commanding as expiations for sins, uh, emancipation of slaves, and commanding that if you see a slave who, uh, we don't have this today, we're just talking about in the past to respond to people who make these, these allegations against Islam without any knowledge. In, uh, 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 the Quran commands us <coughs> to allow uh, a bondsman to buy his freedom if you see that they're, that, they're, that they're good people. Yes, good for society. This person, this person is good for society. We should never, he should never be, uh, 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 he should never be uh, shackled and, and enslaved, okay? So in any case, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out on one of the military expeditions with Aisha radiallahu anha and they camped and uh, when they got up and left, they had forgotten Aisha behind radiallahu anha. It's said that she was looking for her, uh, for her bracelet, that's, that's one uh, of the narrations. The other is that it's said that she went to uh, answer the call of nature and they didn't realize that she hadn't returned to um, I don't know what the Hawdaj is called, it's, it's what's placed on top of a camel and it's covered uh, and it's covered from all sides, it's like a, a small tent on a camel and she was very light so when the camel stood it stood with, it, stu it would stand with ease anyway when she, when she would be uh, on the camel and it did the same obviously when she wasn't there so the companions they, uh, they didn't pay attention and didn't realize that she wasn't there and they left. Now the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always have somebody in front of the, in front of the army in order, to, in order to return if there is any danger and somebody behind to pick up anything that's been uh, left behind, including people. And so, Mustah, no, not Mustah, uh, Safwan uh, ibn, al, uh, ibn al Muattil was appointed to stay behind the army. And so when he, when he, uh, when he got, when he reached the area which the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi had camped in, he found Aisha radiallahu anh, sat there waiting and he said uh, mother of the believers may Allah have mercy on you what's happened and she remained quiet she didn't say anything to him and so he walked ahead he walked ahead and she followed when they entered al Madina, uh, the, the, the hypocrites Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn, Salul, ibn Salul saw, uh, saw Safwan ibn al-Mu'attil come in followed by Aisha and he said this is it Muhammad is not gonna is not going to escape. Is not going to escape this one, and levelled a, a, a slanderous accusation against the two of them. Uh, and the rumours spread around Medina. And even companions, not hypocrites, some of the companions took part in spreading the gossip. Why? Because they didn't know it was haram then, and they didn't think anything of it. And because the rumours were, uh, uh, they were, um, they were, they, uh, they were in poetry form as well and people, the Arabs, they loved poetry and they would literally speak in poetry. 
the poetry spread and the news spread and Allah did not reveal and did not exonerate her for a month. And it was the most difficult month. Aisha was asked, what was the most difficult time that you ever experienced? She didn't say when we were hungry. She didn't say when Medina was under attack. She said when the revelation, Allah withheld it for a month before he exonerated me. It was the most difficult time. She fell ill and didn't know about it until she recovered and realized that Rasul is not spending time with her, not sitting with her, and said to her, if anything, if you've done anything, f repent and seek forgiveness from Allah. And she couldn't believe it. And the Messenger وسلم, doesn't know what to say. He doesn't believe the accusations and the rumors, but he can't, he can't, uh, 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 he can't deny anything categorically either because he doesn't have knowledge of the ghaib, of the unseen. And then Allah revealed her exoneration in Surah An-Nur. <clears throat> Tayyib, what part of this story concerns the name today? One of her cousins, a family member from the same tribe, uh, Mistah, participated in spreading these rumors. And Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr used to support him financially. And when Abu Bakr, her father, learned that Mistah was, uh, was spreading these, uh, these accusations against his daughter, and what accusation? An accusation of adultery. He swore that he would cut off his allowance. Then Allah revealed in Surah An-Nur, وَلَا يَأْتَلِي أُولُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَسَاعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا and let not the ones endowed with grace and affluence, Abu Bakr, endowed with grace and affluence, swear not to give to the near relatives and the destitute and the emigrants in the way of Allah, and let them pardon and let them overlook. Do you not love that Allah should forgive you? For Allah is oft forgiving, bestower of mercy. And when Abu Bakr heard the verse for the first time, he cried and he said, Bala, bala, uhibbu an yaghfir Allahu li. Indeed, indeed, I love for Allah to forgive me. And he restored Mustah's allowance and even increased it. That is a level that I, I don't believe most people can reach. And that's why it was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, a Siddiq who was, who was tested with that and passed that test. And that's why nobody walked the earth after the prophets greater than Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. In reality, the loftiest levels of faith are not only to pardon those who have wronged you, but to be gracious with them, to be generous with them. Allah said, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ أَلَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And hasten towards forgiveness from your Lord and a garden as wide as the heavens and the earth prepared for the muttaqeen, the fearful of Allah, the conscious of Allah. And Allah it describes them. Those who spend in prosperity and adversity. So they give charity even when they're poor. And those who, and wallahi, in this mosque, we've seen charity from people who don't have means, subhanAllah, and they're the most charitable. And those who refrain or restrain, sorry, and those who restrain their rage, and those who forgive mankind. For Allah loves those who excel in doing good. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those who pardon, this is uh, rather, and those who pardon and nas who pardon people. And Allah loves al-muhsineen. Because we said ihsan is given more than what you owe. And so if you restrain your rage, it means you suppress your anger. Some, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not praise somebody who, who, who suppressed their anger unless if it, Allah would not have praised somebody who suppressed their anger if they were angry for their own sake and not for the sake of Allah. 
If they were angry for the sake of Allah and they suppressed it and did something better in order to win that person over, he's the one worthy of praise, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises here in his verses. The one, dear brothers and sisters, the one who pardons others, who forgives and pardons and overlooks others, wins their hearts. And if you win someone, when you win someone's heart, you own them. I don't mean you own them in, a, in, a, uh, in the negative sense. It means that they're indebted to you. They're indebted to you. And when you, when you own somebody, you have something better than the, the, than the earth and what is within it. But if you, if you seek vengeance, then you're always filled with fear and anxiety and there is no satisfaction in vengeance. Uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after he had uh, entered Mecca, he had entered Mecca victorious and he issued, he issued a mass pardon. So it was the most magnanimous act of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life. Uh, uh, a magnanimity that was n that has never been rivaled or equaled by anyone before or after they had accused him of being a liar they had accused him of being a sorcerer of being a poet they had uh, waged war against him taken his property which he didn't take back by the way after Me after Fath Mecca after he entered Mecca he didn't even take back his properties which had been usurped illegally from him and now he enters victorious after Quraysh had even gathered the biggest army the Arabian Peninsula had ever seen, 10,000 people and lay siege to Medina for a month. And so after all of that and more, which we, have, we don't have time to mention the crimes which they committed during their shirk, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, what do you think I'll do with you today? And they said, Akhun Kareem wa ibn Akhin Kareem. You're a generous brother, son of a generous brother. They know who, they know who the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. They know his character. Yet they still disbelieve, they still refuse to believe in him out of arrogance. And now they invoke his generosity. But the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if, his, if he was ever invoked by one of his attributes, he would, he would respond. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you call him by his attribute, he responds to you with that attribute. So that's why he said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدُعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah belong the beautiful names. So invoke him with them. So they said, a generous brother, son of a generous brother. And so the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, اِذْهَبُوا فَأَنْتُمُ الطُّلَقَاءُ Go for your all free. Couldn't believe it. They, uh, uh, within a second, the sense that there is, you know, the noose is around their neck, to suddenly them being tulaqa, meaning free, 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 do what you like, free. But 10 people, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had commanded and ordered for them to be executed because they had committed what you could call today crimes against humanity. Their crimes were too excessive to forgive. Too excessive. Yes? One of them was Abu Jahl's son, Ikrima. Ikrima was the, 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 was the weapon of his father, Abu Jahl. And so Abu Jahl is the, the ringleader, the, 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 the pharaoh of this ummah, as the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Yes, and Ikrima then, during his shirk and jahiliya, Ikrima was the blunt instrument he used against the Muslims. And even after Abu Jahl died in Badr, Ikrima continued. And so Ikrima learned that he wasn't going to be spared. And so he left. Ikrima's wife came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said to him, O Messenger of Allah, uh, would you accept Ikrima if he came to you Muslim? And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes. He comes to be Muslim, yes. And so she sent for her husband. She knew where he was hiding. And he came. So the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the companions, he said, يَأْتِيكُمْ عِكْرِمَةُ بْنُ أَبِي جَهْلِ مُؤْمِنًا مُهَاجِرًا 
Ikrimah, the son of Abu Jahl, is going to come to you as a believer and an immigrant. And an immigrant. فَلَا تَسُبُّ أَبَاهُ Do not insult his father. فَإِنَّ سَبَّ الْمَيِّتِ يُؤْذِي الْحَيَّ وَلَا يَبْلُغُ الْمَيِّتِ For indeed, uh, so he said, so do not insult his father. For insulting the dead does not affect them, but harms the living. There's no loftier manners than those of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at his af. He forgives him and he says, his father is the pharaoh of this ummah. That means nobody is, nobody is worse than Abu Jahl against the Muslims until the day of judgment. Name every despot. Nobody is worse than Abu Jahl. Because his enmity wasn't just against Islam and the Muslims, his enmity is against the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah? And, 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 and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's his, his station with Allah is the highest. And nobody knows, nobody knows the true station of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except Allah. And he, his enmity was against Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And despite that, his son comes, nobody say in front of him or say, say a bad word against his dad. <sighs> Contrast that to us now. Now, I'll, I'd prefer to leave that you know, to leave it on, a, on that note uh, instead of, you know, uh, sullying this lesson uh, and this class with the examples and the examples that I, that I see and the phone calls that I receive all the time of people, dis, you know, fighting and arguing and falling out over nothing and homes being broken and families being torn apart because, uh, because nobody wants to forgive. And they don't want to forgive minor things. Nobody's daughter has been accused of adultery. It's, it's nonsense. She didn't make me a cup of tea. Then the father-in-law says something. And then the cousins hear it and spread it around. And then, that's it. Oh. Shadow me for a day. And just listen to the calls that I get. Anyway. Don't shadow me for a day. <laughs> no. طيب. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-afu to, uh, to pardon us. And the dua that we were taught or the du'a that Aisha radiallahu anha was taught when she asked the Messenger of Allah, if it's, the, if it's Laylatul Qadr, what do I say? And he said, say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Oh Allah, you are afu. You love afu. <laughs> you love afu. It doesn't hurt Allah. He loves, he loves to forgive us and to erase our sins and, and to say to us, forget it, as if it didn't happen. Nothing happened. Come, just come back to me. Tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. So, pardon us. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Shall we take some questions now, inshaAllah?